here we are with part two of our grips passing video. If you haven't watched part one, there's a link right here. And also, if you haven't watched the speed passing video, another link there, go ahead and watch both of those. And the reason is because the concepts that we're going to talk about build upon things that we covered in those two videos. Number one, we are going to flow like water. And in that way, we're not lumberjacks, we're samurai. Now, in our first grips passing video, we went to the knee slide pass. And if you think about it, where we ended up were with one grip on the collar. I've got my left hand on that same side collar of my opponent. And my right hand is either holding the leg right here, where I've shelved it right there, or I've slid my hand onto the hip and I'm flaring out my elbow. That functions just like in Nogi, that functions like a grip. And which brings to mind something that we really want you to keep in mind here, which is the principle of cross grips. So when I enter into that knee slide pass, I'm going to get my cross grips, okay? And if I have too much difficulty, or let's say my opponent reacts the way a guard player should, and he pummels his hands inside and he breaks this grip, I can try and get that cross grip again. But after one or two times, I'm just gonna let go and I am gonna immediately switch to cross grips where I go from this collar, he breaks it, or I'm getting too much resistance, I wanna go to the other side, I immediately grab the other collar. This time, I grab my opponent's pant again, but I grab under the knee, that little bunch of material right there, and now I establish my cross grip. And that is a very, very important aspect of grips passing. What I basically am looking for is the first pass is coming to my left. When he breaks that grip or blocks me in any way or I hit resistance, too much resistance where I don't want to continue to waste energy or time in a, in a tournament, I will switch my gr cross grip right here, and now I'm gonna do a, gr a pass that's gonna go to my right. And so one of my first passes that I go to is the leg weave pass. And the way that works is I get right here, I grab the collar, and I grab under the knee. I come up right here, and I pinch. flaring out my feet like I showed and demonstrated in the speed passing video. So it gives me my balance and it allows me to wedge that leg because that right leg, as I trap it, he's going to want to use that to escape that, to regard. If I can pinch that leg right there, then I keep him from regarding. I'm holding right here and I've got all my weight on his shoulder. I am pinning his left shoulder to the mat. So I'm here, I'm pinching my legs together. I'm feeling if I have much resistance there, I can feel the resistance that he's going to give me if I'm going to push his hips all the way this way to the other side. Okay, if I'm getting not much resistance, I will jump, fly like a bird, and I will jump and plant this hand on the mat let go of that cross grip, keep the collar, and hip switch in the air. I jump and I leg weave, okay? See my hand right here? And I'm still holding this collar. From here, I push down this knee, I come under right here, and I, I wanna drive his leg forward. This is another example of breaking his posture. But if I can't get the leg weave, and I'm feeling too much resistance, I typically won't jump it. You know, a lot of martial arts, like a video game, you're depending on a reaction from your opponent. And oftentimes, I will bait a reaction. I'll kind of move and juke so that I can get my opponent to move one way 
while I know I'm going to move the other. I'm always anticipating what my opponent is about to do. I'm watching his body language. I'm chunking all that information that I've seen. It's jujitsu. It's martial arts. There's only so many things an opponent can do. So once you've seen them enough, you start to anticipate. So as I feel my opponent has too much resistance right there with, for me to jump a leg weave, I will shove as hard as I can with my left hand and I will bring, because I'm already holding this collar, I will bring my elbow over the top of that knee and I will clamp it down like a vice. I feel that he's too strong and I can't leg weave. What I'll do then is I will push down with this leg and get him to give me some resistance and then I pull right here. And as I pull right there, I call this like the leg vice. It's like a clamp of the elbow and I switch immediately to this belt, okay? And I drive right here. Elbow here, pinching until I get my leg free. Once I get my leg free, then I'm gonna go back on top of the bottom leg to pin the hips, lift the belt, get to this position. But, and again, this is jujitsu. We're always thinking about our options. What are our butts? If I go for that leg, dra that leg weave and I don't get it, or I go for that like, elbow clamp on the leg and I don't get it, I immediately jump back to the other side as quickly as I can to beat my opponent's reaction and go back into the knee slide. And this time, because I'm holding that right collar, I just jam my elbow down between his elbow and his side. I'm trying to get to the mat. I'm not trying to get into his body. So I jam that between the two and that functions as a underhook. And then I'll immediately baseball slide out my hips and try and get to that knee slide right there. If that doesn't work and there's always a good chance that it's not going to, I still have that collar grip. I again reach back under my opponent's knee, grab that material, and shove as hard as I can quickly to once again beat the reaction speed. That is what we're trying to do here. When we're going side to side, again, like we talked about in the speed passing video, you know, we're juking, we are samurai. Okay? And the quicker that we can react and elicit a reaction from our opponent, then the more successful we're gonna be. Because if I can beat you to the punch, then I probably can exert a whole lot less strength and energy passing the guard. And so I'll immediately then jam back and clamp the elbow, lift the hip, and this time I usually get it. But if I don't, then again, I get back, I'll go right back to my knee slide position, and this time I'll get the grip on the pant get the collar again, and this time I'll do something completely different, oftentimes like a long step pass. Tynan Dalpra uses it to great effect. This is Guy Mendez, this is his number one pass. It, again, I'm holding the collar, I push out right here and I get right here. From here, I'm gonna drop the head, long step. Now, once I'm in this position, I don't like to let go of my grips. I keep the cross grips, and I punch this leg back down. So I take this uh, grip and I punch the knee down as I'm backing away from him. I don't wanna to be too close to him. Then I jump to the other side. Now look, this is another principle. I do not let go of my grips ever until, no matter what position it is, until I can better my grip. And so right here, I'm driving I'm off of my knees, I'm on my toes, I'm driving my shoulder, all of my weight into him right here. I'm holding this grip and I'm holding this. The only time I let go of this leg is to get a better grip and that better grip is the belt grip. So then I come here, I grab the belt, I pull up and I get to that leg drive position. Now, a few things to talk about here. The knee slide position is, again, really my home base, but there are some times when I am in that position, and I've been in this with competitions and in sparring, 
And there's nothing more frustrating when your opponent has a really, really strong and tight um, half guard. And they just pinch your leg and you can't slide it out from knee slide. You're trying to move the hip. You can't do that. You're almost like stuck in this stalemate position. So there are two things that I do. Um, one is I will go for the crazy dog pass. As I'm passing, someone gets a really tight like half guard like right here and I can't move and I can't get underneath and I can't get right here. Um, this, this is a real problem, okay? And for this, the first pass that I will, I'll go to when they get like this and they're playing this really, really tight half guard is again, I'm right here. I will thread my right hand through and I will grab this gi tight, this gi material on the other side, uh, on the bottom of this, his bottom leg. And so from here, I will draw, I'm going to lift with my right hand. This is called the crazy dog pass. And so I'm gonna lift with my right hand while I'm pulling him and breaking his posture here. While I'm lifting this leg, I'm going to drive this leg down, okay? And I'm gonna pinch them together. As I do that, my leg right here, go ahead, get tight, yeah. I'm going to slide it like this and come around. You could see even right there with that Dela Heba hook, it can get very difficult to free that leg. And so I'm gonna have to slide my leg out the back right there. So I come, I'm here, I grab the bottom of the gi material right here, and I drive this shoulder down. And I come, see how I slide that out? And then I come right here. Again, another favorite AOJ, really Atos Pass, that I really learned all my details from, from um, Professor Bruno Frazzato. Great dude, love him. He was my professor at, uh, at uh, AOJ for a while and really good friend of mine and amazing jujitsu instructor and competitor. But sometimes I cannot get that pass either. And then what I'll do is if I have that grip right here, I will just go ahead and grab the other collar. So I have both collars and I'll pull them as hard as I can and I'll lift my opponent's back off the mat while driving my knee as high up into their chest as I can. And as I'm doing this, I'm like inching my leg free, like drive my knee right into his sternum. So I come right here and I just start driving right here until he can't breathe. And I'm just inching it up and inching it up. And once I get a little bit free and I've, you okay? Once I've gotten my, my knee all the way up almost to his chest, I take my right elbow and I drive it down as if it's an underhook. So I come here and then I come here, right here. And my goal is to get this right elbow to the mat. Once I do that, I negate his underhook, right? And from here, I will again come around. I've got this hooked, pinning his hip right here. Because if I pin his hip right here with my foot, then he cannot attack me, okay? There's no buggy choke that he's gonna do. He can't regard because his hips are pinned. And now I am set up for my next attack. So again, that is the end of our grips passing system. It is not in any way an exhaustive list of techniques as far as side to side that you can use, but what it is is a foundation. You have an understanding of where you start, which is from knee slide pass. Then you know you're going to go to the right when you meet resistance and then back to the left and then to the right. And really it's think of these as widgets that you can interchange. Oh, I have a new move that I've learned. I've learned a pass to this side. I've learned a pass to this side. And some you'll invent. 
Um, there are some really crazy, like jumping around, you know, once I have the cross grip right here, we're all just somersault all the way around. Um, and that works sometimes, but you know, don't be afraid to, once you really get these down to, you know, interchange these moves, um, and always be thinking if you meet enough resistance, go to the other side, pop, 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 pop until you wear down your opponent and break them mentally, or you beat them to the punch. You're so fast in front of them that they just can't clamp down and stop you from moving. Uh, again, like and subscribe. We're going to have more videos coming. I'm going to be in London for the next month uh, training with Ross Nichols at London Grapple. If anybody wants privates to really go over some of these things or even a seminar while I'm in the UK, then make sure and hit me. Ciao.